I am Joe Ehizode. Welcome to Platform Media Political Arena. Tonight, I welcome you all on this special edition. We are setting an agenda for the second term of President Muhammadu Buhari uh, Teno as President of Nigeria. In a few days' time, he will uh, he will be sworn in as as uh, for another four-year term, and perhaps we suspect that he's going to bring a new team. Uh, platform media have to examine this and set an agenda for the incoming administration of Muhammad Buhari. Tonight, I have in my studio, in the studio, will be Ziadi Be Welcome to the program. Thank you, Joe. Uh, we all were here when uh, Buhari was elected. Um, it, it was, I can say that the, the election was a Pyrrhic victory for him. And now, I, everything seems set that he will be sworn in on May 29th. Um, he's on record as one president who have used the same team for the four years that he had ruled. And we suspect that in the next, after uh, May 29th, after he's sworn in, he might come up with a new team. Obi, what are the pains of Nigerians in the past four years that Buhari should address? Let's start with that. Well, he himself has admitted that uh, Nigerians are hungry under him. Nigeria has been defined as the poverty capital of the world at this time. Uh, it's an insecure place. You know, lots of lives have been lost through terrorist activities, through the activities of uh, hesmen and, and kidnappings and uh, terrorists. And so uh, that's another problem that Nigerians are, are facing. Uh, the roads are near impassable, you know, we don't have the infrastructure to support transportation of goods and uh, human Services. resources. So, so those are critical factors. Uh, the power factor is, is, is still a major problem in Nigeria. So those are areas that are bordering Nigerians. Unemployment is high, so many youths are without jobs and uh, migration to Europe through the Atlantic uh, is a way open to Nigerians to find a way to survive. So these are things that the government can uh, focus attention on. Um, yeah, Obi, he, <laughs> the reason why, part of the reason why Buhari was a popular candidate in 2015 uh, uh, was because of integrity. They said he very, has very high integrity and perhaps that he, people view him as a very tough person who can confront uh, the the hydra-headed terror, um, the insecurity in Nigeria. Uh, but can we really say that he was able to prove himself in that aspect that brought him to power? Uh, maybe as a person, uh, he, he has integrity. But in action, in reality, we haven't seen that at work. You know, the Buhari we used to know in the, in the 80s is currently not the Buhari that we have performing the duties of... Uh, of, uh, of of a president, he hasn't shown any form of uh, integrity. You know, his ministers had stolen money. There had been allegations of corruption against his chief of staff. Uh, uh, many, uh, the, the current CBN governor uh, opened the doors of the nation's treasury to people like uh, uh, Dasuki and uh, people who cutted away the resources of the nation and. Uh, uh, if he has integrity, those people should not be close to his administration. It's like uh, it's like having a house, and uh, you are the owner of the house, and your house is porous, and you are not even protecting your children. What's what's the need of being the father of the house? Uh, yes. Okay. You mentioned um, integrity, X failure. Uh, what about um, um, insecurity? The basic aim of a government is to provide security. But is that uh, scoring Buhari in the past four years? Well, in the first instance, he, he, he relocated the defense operational headquarters of Nigerian Defense Ministry to, 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 to Medjugorje. And we, we thought that could uh, curb insecurity. He didn't do anything. You know, then he complained he had no arms. You know, he was given a billion dollar uh, fund to procure arms, yet Boko Haram continues to be on the offensive. And so he, he, he seems to lack an effective strategy to confront terrorism. 
And in that regard, he, he is also a failure. We, when we talk about insecurity in Nigeria, people tend to narrow it down with, to Boko Haram. Obi, you and I know there's a lot of many things that constitute insecurity in Nigeria. Kidnapping. Um, it's going on unchecked in every nook and cranny of Nigeria. People don't, people, ladies are not free anymore. Uh, men are not free. Children are not even exempted. People kidnap and at, at will. So it's not only in northern, northern part of Nigeria that you have insecurity, even in southern part, in kidnapping is still holding sway. So he, how would he address that? Well, he, he can address that by having uh, a minister for, uh, for, for national security or a national security advisor who shouldn't continue blaming others for, for their failure. After four years. But yes, we, we had the Minister of the Interior, Dambazu, uh, blaming the influence of guns into Nigeria as from coming Libya. from Libya. And the other time, they were blaming uh, opposition politicians for sponsoring the bandits. And another time, they were blaming, blaming uh, illegal miners. And so the blame game continues. Uh, we've had enough of those blames. If you are unable to discharge your functions, your responsibilities, please make way for other more competent hands. It's not an impossible thing for, for, for the Nigerian army to defeat terrorism. Uh, the, the political will is simply not there. Some school of thought have also um, suggested that this Boko Haram issue has been politicized. Do you agree with the school of thought that some, some people are benefiting from the war against Boko Haram? That the money you just mentioned just now, that one billion naira or one billion dollars was earmarked for the purchase of arms, and we don't see anything like that. We see on, perhaps those stories are not true, but we see that soldiers even have to even um, they'll have water when they go to the Sahara Desert to fight Boko Haram. The, the armor tanks, sometimes they have to push to start. That's not an effective way of, of checking insur uh, insurrection. Uh, well, a lot of people are making money from, from terrorism. The, the, the ex-chief uh, of defense staff, a, a defense staff, a body that just died, you know, made, uh, made billions of dollars from from terrorism. In Hejrika, who was the chief of army staff during his time, also made enough money to want to become a governor after leaving office. So the money, it's one thing to budget money for an operation. It's another thing to, to ensure monitor it. To, 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 to be implemented and used for the purpose for which it is designed. You know, we don't have that mechanism in Nigeria. The budgeting is done. The people at the top uh, allocate the money to themselves and the frontline soldiers don't get anything. And there have been an up, uh, several uprisings by soldiers saying that we cannot go to fight without arms. arms it and happened, die in war. Uh, and die, you know. So uh, that's a problem that the president should confront. And it's, it's an easy thing to do, but he lacks the will to do it. Or he doesn't want to do it. If the question that comes to mind, if there's this... Issue, there are these issues on the ground. Um, integrity, not there. Insecurity, poor. Uh, provision on family is poor. But there's a, a whole lot of money budgeted every year and it's not monitored. Why is he using the same team for four years? Obasan Joe was capable of changing his team if they're not performing. Mm. But Buhari doesn't. He's, the same ministers he appointed in 2015, they're still with him today. Is that, a, is that not a sign of weakness, too? Well, I, I don't think so. Allowing a minister a, a spectrum of four years to perform offers him the stability to discharge his responsibilities effectively. At the end of the four years, if he didn't, uh, he wouldn't blame anyone that, you know, that he had a short term to, to discharge it. So, so I like that kind of long-term stability for, for, for the minister. But it's down to the head himself, you know, to set... Targets, targets and say the know, pace and say the pace and, and to demand accomplishment accomplishment or, or milestones within the target to ensure that these ministers are performing. So if you left them on their own, you know, there are no targets, they, they won't do anything and nothing was done. <laughs> so uh, APC led government um, coming in um, will have uh, insecurity 
even sports that brings Nigerians to, 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 together. Mm. I've just read in newspaper today the, the, the name of the name of Super Eagles players are coming out. And I saw the feedback. Nobody's questioning where the players are from. And I expected the government to work on that and see how they can use sport as its form of uh, building national cohesion. But even that, if just a report just came out today that um, <laughs> the International Athletic Federation wants to suspend Nigeria because there's, there was they, they detected fraud in the system, and we have a government, responsible government. The accusation is not coming from within, yeah, so yeah. I won't blame it on political position. It's coming from outside, outside yeah. and government is not doing anything. Sports is almost a failure. Um, at, Nigerians used to. Remember the days of Chidim or Innocent Egbunike, yeah. Henry and Mike. Yeah. But we can't find anybody in sports anymore. Uh, our own Dalian Gali is the chairman of the Fed Wrestling Federation. He, I understand he, he has to solicit for a front to take wrestlers to the northern part of uh, Africa to compete in a show where they mm. won. Mm. But government claim credit. So in, in look at the whole gamut of, uh, of uh, government uh, sector. There seems to be any area where Nigerians can say hurrah that they have done well. Do you think there's anyone? Well, if the head is sick, uh, the rest of the body cannot claim to do well. Can we narrow down to his age? Is it because of age or he's not, he's not responsive? Uh, well, I, I, I wouldn't narrow it down to his age. It's, uh, he, he seems to be overwhelmed by the problems of Nigeria. He, he doesn't have a clue as to how That's to That's surprising address. because somebody have uh, uh, been contesting elections in 20, uh, 1999, yeah. no, since uh, 2001, mm. and got it. Mm. So uh, the, the word of whim is surprising to a lot of people. because It, it is. He, that means he, he should he, have been prepared for it. He is overwhelmed because he has no solution to the problems of the nation. So, hey. so what could be our suggestion? Because we cannot just lay it down now. What could be uh, our suggestion? Our suggestion would be to wait it out for, for the next four years. If we can have a nation that didn't in, uh, disintegrate, if we didn't have any uh, uprising by the citizens, you know, at the end of uh, the, the next four years, we will start to rebuild. You know, I don't see anything drastic happening. Okay, do you opinion. now, do you think Nigerians are that patient or that have the capability to withstand another four years of hunger? Or they will even stand 20 years of hunger because uh, they, they, they seem to have uh, the, the, the patience of Job in, 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 in suffering. <laughs> <laughs> patience of Job, you call it? Yes, 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 yes. Well, and the Atlantic is still open for people who have the wherewithal to, to fly out of Nigeria. Oh, yes. So people have to even go by road and then fly through the uh, Mediterranean. And uh, currently the government is uh, discouraging immigration to, to Europe by asking the European Union to limit the number of visas that are being given to Nigerian youth. Is that fair? It's not fair. It's stupidity. Well, Obi. <laughs> Every time we discuss Nigeria here, um, it gives me some worries. I'm not. I'm even more worried that in the next four years we have to deal with this. If Buhari continues with this, um, Lagos Ibada Expressway that is the gateway to other West African countries. Mm -hmm. No, not Lagos. Lagos Ibada Expressway. Mm -hmm. I saw the picture yesterday. That was terrible. The road leading to the uh, to the east after after Benin is terrible. The road to Abuja, the the nation headquarter uh, capital, is also terrible from the west. From the west, so uh, if the road is not good, I, I talk to people in Nigeria. You, you, if when you do a video call, you can you can't see the person in Nigeria because they're in darkness, and children are not going to school anymore. Yeah, the nation doesn't have the money to fix this road. You know, it, it has to expand its economy. You know, he has to obtain uh, soft loans. He has to have the will to do these things. And those things are not happening now. If somebody cannot provide all this amenity in four years, do you think he has a way with her to uh, obtain loans and, and monitor the use of those loans? Because it's not used 
getting a loan from World Bank and then the money ends up in public and uh, private pockets? Well, you have to have a proposal, you have to have a plan, you have to talk to the people at the World Bank. Uh, he, he needs people who have international exposure. You know. And it's not, right yeah. now it's not getting... He, he doesn't have those people. Yeah. Well, Zubi, thank you for coming to the program again. Uh, well, viewers, you see, we're setting up an agenda for President Mohamed Buhari. Um, if we say the last four years was tough, he has also promised us that it will be tougher. And that's not a good news at all for Nigerians. And like Obi said, Nigerians have the patience of Job to withstand another four years and, and see it through. But I, we, I'm yet to see where that patience will come from. Obi, I want to thank you. And for viewers who are watching us across the globe, I want to thank you for stand, standing by us. And to our producer behind the camera, thank you for doing a good job. Obi, I can't thank you more enough. Thank you. And I'll see you again next Th time. Thank you. Have a good night. I'm yours sincerely, Joe Ehizode. Good night.